it's time to take a look into the flow hive because the frames are ready to turn the crank and get some honey. But we have some things to do to get all of this ready before we start filling jars. The first thing we need to do is make sure that it's a little bit tilted toward the back where we're gonna actually hope the honey runs out. So the first thing we're gonna do, as you can see, is we need to make this tilt toward the back. So we're gonna make sure the bubble is leaning toward the other side of level. Let's get that going. And the way we're gonna do it today is by adjusting the little feet on the bottom. All right, give it a little. There you go. All right, see what happens. Oh, now let's use the level laid across the top. Let's see where we're at. Did that help? Nope, nope. What do you think, Sherry? Still in the middle. Leaning toward the back still. It needs to lean toward the front. Let's do it a little more. All right. Yep. Let me get this one. Get them both the same, pretty much. All right. Now put it on there and see where you're at. Where am I? All right, here it is. Yeah, I like that. It's leaning a little bit toward uh, that direction, so it's making, let's make sure. So it's tilted toward the back. Yep, yep. It's probably what we want. All right, so today we've taken a look in here and it looks like these frames in the flow hive are capped over and ready. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? You can see the honey sitting in here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Da, 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 da and it just looks like it's ready. It's capped over all the way out here to the edge, so I'm pretty sure that it looks good in the middle. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can bottle a couple of jars. So the door that we took off the window here makes our table. So we'll go ahead and place that here. This will hold our jars. Let me see if I can get that to fit. Maybe it changed with some weather. There we go. All right, so we're gonna put our jars about right here. And I'm gonna put the little tubes. Let's see what that is gonna be like just to do a little. Yeah, that'll work fine. So what we're gonna do is take this little piece off here. That's gonna expose a little cap we're gonna take off and we're gonna insert our key in here. And once we start turning it, once we place the tube at the bottom, we'll start filling up our jars. I'm gonna go for this one first. So let's take this cap off. And by the way, guys, I'm doing this like a new beginner would, somebody that you know hasn't read a whole bunch up on it, somebody just buys a hive, and uh, what would they do? Wow, that thing is tight. <laughs> do I just pull? Do I use my hive tool? Do I break it, twist it, unscrew it, twist it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, just had to give it a little twist. And the honey's coming out already. So let's get this on there. That's kind of a messy thing. The tab is at the bottom. All right. I hope that's going to seal. Let's trust that it will. All right, looks good. Now let's take our key. I'm going to insert the key. Oh, we're going to take this little cap off. All right, that cap came off. I'm keeping my caps located. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheat a little bit because as somebody that's brand new to the flow hive, I would just insert this all the way and turn it. But enough people have told me, don't do that. You need to turn it a little bit at a time. And it's gonna make a snapping noise. So let's insert it just about a few inches. Keep watching, we are about ready to turn the key to watch the honey flow from the flow hive. And before we do though, I wanna encourage you guys to please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Subscribing helps me so much. Little button at the bottom, subscribe, click on the bell. You'll be notified each time I make a new video. I'm working hard for you guys to help you out. So help me out by subscribing. Let's turn that crank. And go to the snapping point a little bit further. They say if you don't, if you do it all at once, it's a little bit too hard. All right, there we go. And it's coming out, look at that. It's kind of a warm day, so everything's pretty hot. 
So it should flow pretty well. Get this cap off here. All right, here we go. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit a few times here. A little deeper. Yep. A little deeper. And let's go all the way. All right, got it all the way in there that time. Let's make sure this one's all the way. I'm not sure I went all the way back on this one. All right. Here we go. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that means there's not a... Oh, ooh, got a fly in there. Oh. Oh, an old dirty fly. Ah, oh, shoot, we got a fly in there. And that, folks, is why you want to put a cheesecloth on there. We'll never get that fly out of there. An old dirty fly. Hmm. Well, let me try this. I'll wash all this off later, I guess. Nope. Almost. Never thought about flies getting in there. Got it. I was worried about bees, but I wasn't worried about flies. Something to think about. Looks like that one's about done, isn't it? I'm ready to close that one up. Okay, here we go on the close up. I'm gonna insert it in the top up here. Oh, let's see. And close a little bit at a time too, maybe? Might as well, huh? I'll go all the way. All right, that one's closed up. So we can put our little cap on that. Okay, that one's pretty much done, wouldn't you say, Sherry? Let it, let it run a little bit more. Let's close it up. I'm gonna check back here. I'll make sure I got that all the way to the back. I don't want it running out all day. Yeah, it's closed. All right. Just capping them up on top. And once we get this cap on here, I'm gonna try to be ready. I thought this might be threaded, but it's not. You just, it just wedges in there. Okay, I wouldn't mind a wash rag to kind of clean all that up a little bit. It's gonna attract ants and stuff like that. So we have to be careful about that. Let's put a lid on this jar. Well, not sure why one jar uh, didn't quite make a quart, but that's it. This one did make a quart. Let's go ahead and get that capped over. And pull out the little thingy, put the cap right in there. The cap went in a lot better than it came out. I guess that's just propolized in there. I don't know why everything leaked so much. So much honey leaked down on here just by not getting in those tubes fast enough but I'm gonna wipe it off really good with a wet rag and get all the honey off the face of the hive. That way it won't, uh, won't cause any ropping. That looks pretty good. And the caps are in good. These are good. So what you need to do now is place it all back together. So this is the outside piece here. 
goes up there. That kind of seals off our caps where the key goes. A little bit of honey down here on this piece, so I like to wipe all the honey off. And then we can put our door back on here and close it all up. And the beads will refill those uh, combs that we extracted from. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, I'm not sure why one was a little more than the other, but look at that. We got two jars, two quarts almost, from two out of seven frames. Now I want to explain to you guys that now that the dearth is almost here, that means the bees are no longer foraging very much, it's time for us to raise bees that will survive the winter. They're their whole genetic structure changes, their physiology changes to adapt to winter. And you can come alongside your hives and help raise more bees of winter physiology that live four to eight months. Let me explain it in this video right here. See you over there.